That would be great. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God, not because of work. Not the fulfillment of the law of the law demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do, so no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. For we, thank you, sir. for we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestinated, planned beforehand for us, taking part which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. Hallelujah. This evening I'll be sharing with us a caption. The man called grace. I'll be speaking about a caption. The man called grace. Brethren, the purpose of our message tonight is to establish the personality of grace and his doings. And the second purpose of our message tonight is to explain to us or to make us see what happened when a man meets grace. Hallelujah. Yeah. Biblically, because of time, I'm just going to rush over this. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is unmerited favor. It is God's free action for the benefit of his people. Grace is God's free action for the benefit of his people. I am glad tonight I am speaking about grace in Graceland Harvest Church. Hallelujah. And the grace of God upon this church shall manifest in somebody's life in the name of Jesus. If you believe there is grace in the house and you know tonight that grace is about to manifest, I want you to shout a louder amen. But then grace is different from justice. It's different from mercy. So justice is you having what you deserve. Mercy is you not having what you deserve. Mercy, we were condemned to death because of sin. But mercy said no. Amen. And grace is you having what you do not deserve. We were condemned to sin. Mercy said no. Because of grace, I am going to give them eternal life. Follow me. I want to establish the personality of grace. Grace is getting what we do not deserve. In grace, we have eternal life, something that quite obviously we do not deserve. But because of God's love, his kindness, his mercy, through Christ Jesus, he gave us what we have now on the cross of Calvary. Grace. It is a product of God that is given by God because of who he is, not who we are. It is a product that is given by God because of his likeness, because of his attributes, not because we 
actions, based on our doings, we do not deserve it. But he looked down upon us, and he so loved us, he so had mercy on us, he decided to release that grace upon us. And tonight I want to tell somebody that that grace shall speak for you in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life. It doesn't matter how far you might have gone. It doesn't matter how the devil might have tormented you. Once in the show, the grace of God is available tonight in Graceland Harvest Church. And that grace shall speak for you in the name of Jesus. That grace shall speak. Hallelujah. salvation and salvation is gotten through Yeshua and when you want to explain Yeshua in our common language we all know it means Jesus the translation of Yeshua is Jesus and when you want to translate Yeshua again it means salvation and when you read John 3 verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus continued to speak in John 14 verse 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you are about to put all this together, I want to submit to you tonight that if we are saved by grace and we have salvation and the only person through which we can get to the Father is Jesus, then I want to present to us tonight that the man called grace is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that God has sent to be the deliverer of your life, the one that God has sent to bring salvation to you, to bring salvation to your family. And tonight, Yeshua HaMashiach, he shall meet you at the point of your need, and there shall be a transformation. If you believe it, shout a big amen. I want us to continue. Grace. I'll give you some little definition about grace. And then we'll see what happened when the man met grace. Brethren, grace is a deleter of a negative past and an establisher of a glorious, holy, prosperous, anointed future. Grace deletes your negative past and establish a glorious future. We see that in a man called Paul, a soul, that is how he was called. In Acts chapter 8, the Bible says Saul was on his way to Damascus. What was Saul going to do? He was going to persecute the Christian. As usual, when you read that scripture, the Bible says this was a man that killed Christians, persecuted Christians, locked them up in prison on his way to Damascus. What happened to him? He had an encounter with grace and a man that used to persecute Christian called Saul when he met with Jesus. What did Jesus do? He went into the past of, of, of Saul. He began to delete. You were once a killer. He deleted the killer. You were once a thief. He deleted it. You were once a fornicator. He deleted it. You were once an adulterer. He deleted it. And he looked at Saul and said from today, I am changing your name because I want to give you a bright future. He said from today, you shall be called Paul, the one that will write to tell of the Holy Scripture. But when you look at Paul and you look at Saul, you see two different entities. One was a killer, one was an adulterer. But when he met grace, his life was transformed. to him. I don't know what I'm speaking to tonight. You might be having a negative future and you have concluded about yourself. I want to tell you tonight when you meet with grace yeah. when you meet with grace yeah. he deletes 
the past and establish a future. Do not condemn yourself. You are not worse than Paul. You are not worse than Saul. No, no, no. Do not condemn yourself. For grace is available. It deletes your negative past and establish a bright future. Tonight, that story that people used to know about you, that name that people used to call you, yes, they know you, but grace is about to change your identity. Grace is about to change your name. It deletes your negative past and it establish a bright future. Number two, definition I give for grace. Grace is the maker and the qualifier of men. Looking at my 
family. I am not qualified. I am not, I am not. People know me, they know I am not. But grace! Can somebody say grace? He picked me from a nobody. He washed me and he molded me. And he qualified me to be his. And after three years in America, getting to know my fathers, I am standing on one of the greatest pulpits. It is not by effort, not by ability. Grace has qualified me. And grace has qualified you. You do not own those mega churches by your own abilities. Grace. When our father, Pastor Victor, was speaking to us this morning, how he got his structure, I was just smiling and looking at my notes. I was saying, you, it's grace that qualified you. Grace was doing the work while you were busy with the other things. Grace was making it possible. But then I speak to somebody tonight. Grace is qualifying you. After this session tonight, Grace is ushering you to your next level, to your next level. Especially where I am coming. 
come before. San Francisco. I'll tell you. It is the mother. You are not seeing sin in your own area. Come. You will see sin. I mean, I'm not talking spiritually. You will see sin physically. Walking in the streets. You will see it. So for you to be able to overcome and live holy. Grace. It sees us. It covers us. It enables us to be able to overcome and live holy. May that grace look at somebody tonight. I said, may that grace look at you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, grace is a sustainer in times of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Grace is sustainer. Lady came. No, this one 
will it happen? I slept and I dreamt that this lady called me that I should pray for her. She wants to go for an operation. And in the, in the dream, I saw what she was going through. It was because she wanted to give birth. But now when I got up, I told my wife, this lady is not married. So, I don't know, pregnancy, but she's not married. And I called the lady. And I told her, I see. You called me in the, and you said I should pray for you that you are about to be appointed. She said, yes, man of God. I have multiple fibroids. Multiple. I said, okay, maybe that is what I saw. And I was still sorry. I didn't want to tell her that it was not about fibroids. There was something else. But I said, let me not provoke her. You know, sometimes with a prophetic, you keep it to yourself. Use wisdom. And she said, man, well, there's something I want to tell you. I said, okay, what is it? She said, with the multiple fibroids, I am pregnant. I said, okay, thank you, Jesus. Now I can hit it. When she said I am praying, I said, yes, that is what I saw. What you called me was not because of fibroid. It was pregnancy. And she said, man of God, the doctors have said this pregnancy must be aborted because the multiple fibroid is compressing the baby. The baby cannot live. This woman was going to the hospital every week, twice a week. Confidence, 
you realize that the journey from where Jesus was and to where Lazarus died was a two-day journey. So, when they told Jesus that Lazarus was dead, he waited two days and then he started traveling for another two days. That is why he arrived four days after his death and he was already buried. And according to the Hebrew myth, they believe that when you are dead, two or three days after, your spirit is still roaming around. So Jesus came on the fourth day. That has already defeated that myth. They believe now that the spirit has gone to be with the father. That is why when Jesus came, I was speaking to Martha or Mary. She said, I know on the day of resurrection, he will, will see him. But Jesus was not talking about that day. He was talking about the now. Because his grace that is able to bring back to life what was dead. When Christ stood in front of the tomb, he shouted, Lazarus, come out. The voice of Christ penetrated the walls, went into the grave, saw a body that was decomposed, already Marcus speaking on it and feasting on it, and he began to rearrange the body, putting back the eyes, the ears, and every part that was destroyed by the death, and he pulled him out of the grave, and Lazarus started walking out of the grave. I don't know what is death in your body, in your life, in your marriage, in your finance, but I want to tell you tonight, the grace of God is available for resurrection. The grace of God is available for resurrection. I am not talking on the last day. I am talking of the now. When the grace meets the dead, it brings them back to life. What about the widow of man that her only son died? When they were going to bury that boy, the Bible says the only son of the widow that was dead met with the only son of God that was alive, that is able to give life. And when the only son of God, which is grace, met with the widow's son that was dead, life was released. Tonight, life is about to be released. In every death situation in your life, in everything in your life, I believe in the resurrection power. And even when Lazarus came out of the grave, the Bible says he was bound from head to toe. So even though he was alive, he was useless. Because a man that is bound from head to toe is useless. But when Jesus saw him, he said one thing, I am grace and I am speaking to you. Lose him for him to go and fulfill destiny. Tonight, the grace of God will liberate somebody and usher you into your destiny. And usher you into your next level. If you believe in shout amen. Grace. It brings resurrection and liberation. Somebody, your marriage, I speak as I hear it right now. Your marriage is dead. You are in the marriage, but the marriage is dead. But after tonight, grace is revitalizing. It's revitalizing. It's bringing back to life. It's bringing back to life. That marriage in the name of Jesus. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives it in you, it shall revitalize, it shall reawaken, it shall requicken your mortal bodies. Whatever was dead in your life, I speak by prophecy. Let it come back to life in the name of Jesus. Two more points as we round up. When grace meets man, there is provision. Matthew chapter 17, verse 27. Matthew chapter 17, verse 27. I want to prophesy this to every church that believes. Provision for your building is locating you in the name of Jesus. I am speaking it even to my own self. Provision for your building is locating you in the name of Jesus. Many are saying, where is the money going to come from? The money is in the mouth of the fish. The money is in the mouth of the fish. The money is in the mouth of the fish. Are you getting what I'm saying? When Grace met the tax collector and they were asking for tax and the disciples thought Jesus is going to refuse or pay tax. Jesus said, no, I am not going to refuse. 
let's not create a confusion here. But you know what I will do? Go and cast your net into the sea. When you cast your net into the sea, the first fish that you catch, open his mouth, we find money. Go and pay mine. And then. Grace for provision. Grace. Grace. There is money in the mouth of the fish. That is why I want to call on all of us pastors. Go out there and fish. Go out there and fish. Millions are walking the streets. Millions are in our junctions. Millions are out there. Fish them. Fish them. And you will see the provision. For grace is available. You carry grace. My brother stood yesterday and was fishing out here for one hour. He was fishing. He was talking. He was talking. And the guy was listening. A Muslim. He was listening for one hour. The seed has been planted. Go out there and fish. For grace is available. Amen. Lastly, as we pray, when grace is available, there is salvation and deliverance. There is salvation and deliverance. The scripture we read, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, is not talking about how we have been saved. It is not by effort. It is by the grace of God. Not by works. Not by good deeds. But by the grace of God. Jesus met a woman at the well. John chapter 4 from verse 9. And this woman had been going through a serious situation. The woman where is your husband? This Jesus said, eh? the prophet is that Jesus had him. Eh? I'm not seeing the prophet like prophet Jesus. He said, I have no, he said, yes, you have no husband because the first died. The second died. Four feet. Brother, I don't know who is listening to me tonight. And you are going through a situation that things are just die in your hands. Whatever you lay your hands to do, it dies. Both spiritually and physically. I want to tell you, grace is available to bring salvation to you. Amen. Salvation also means deliverance. To set you free from that plague that kills things in your hands. Of the brothers in church said, Man of God, if there are other ways to heaven, I'll take it. 
But he doesn't know whether there are other ways. I said, yes, you, you are being honest because he's a new convert. He knows nothing. I said, Jesus is the only way to heaven. And only him can save us. If you are here, you want to make that commitment tonight. Grace is available to give you salvation. And when salvation comes, all the other things we've spoken here tonight, it will be added unto you. But first, your salvation. I call on our prophet, Prophet Manu.